Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. If you've seen the previous video right before this one, you guys will know that I was by JD Cycle Works in Nazareth, Pennsylvania, and we gave you guys the new information about as far as what's going to be happening with Silverback as far as the engine goes. So we're doing a 130 stage four heads from T-Man Performance. So the thing is, I actually don't have any audio for all the footage that I took while I was there because I had made a new vlogging rig and I actually plugged uh, my new microphone into the wrong port and that's what happens when you goof up, make a mistake, you don't have any audio. But I'm still gonna give you guys the footage. I'm just gonna do a voiceover again in this video. It's not gonna happen again, I promise you that, I hope. But uh, anyway, we have a whole bunch of parts coming uh, for the road king build 2001 giveaway bike do me a favor if you guys still want to enter on this to win this bike in april go to www.cycle-fanatics.com and get yourself entered to win so what we have coming is a new brand new chrome crash bar and a brand new seat um which i ordered first because obviously we need the seat on it because i took obviously the old seat off so those are the two items that sh i should be getting in a couple days we are leaving in three days for north carolina to be picking up all the paint for silverback and then we're going to be heading down to georgia to do a video with robert simmons and barber cvo 19 and then we'll be back um so stay tuned for all those videos stay tuned obviously for the parts update and when they come in we'll be installing them on our road king build cholo vikla build this video is actually about the zippers chain drive conversion kit that we did on silverback so here it is without further ado it's going to be a voiceover i apologize but i think i got most of the detail that you guys need for the installation it's looks fairly simple not too difficult so here it is and i'll talk to you guys in a bit all right guys so this is silverback right here just showing you guys really quickly the cylinders are off fender obviously every all the components are off the bike cylinders crank is out this is another road glide that he just did the zippers chain drive conversion kit on and this gentleman chose a black chain so i wanted to show you guys the difference the links are actually gold but this is my kit here. This is the rear sprocket, steel rear sprocket in black. Uh, the chain, which I chose a gold chain. This is the front sprocket. And then Dave will be unboxing the new axle. So this is a zippers kit. I believe they produce all of the parts except for the chain, RNK makes the chain, though that is the axle adjusters, which is fantastic. That's great that the zippers kit comes with the axle adjusters because it'll definitely prevent it from obviously um, going untrue. So now Dave is taking off, there is a plate actually over the nut that holds the sprocket and that prevents the that nut that is just a second line of safety to prevent that nut from coming off and the sprocket coming off so he's taking that plate off now and now he is using the impact gun to take off that big nut that holds the front sprocket. So now he's taken the front sprocket off. And as you're gonna see, he's just doing an ins a quick inspection just to make sure that everything, as far as the bearings are good, no leaking, making sure that that spline shaft is just rotating smoothly and properly blowing any dust or debris out of the way
And now Dave is putting on the new sprocket and he is just putting on the nut temporarily until we put the chain on just so this way if he has to take it back off to move anything or adjust the chain in any way um, he can do so now he's taking off the chain guard he's gonna put that aside So now Dave is breaking the nut loose off of the axle. And he's gonna take that nut off and take the um, stock uh, oblongated um, adjuster. I'm not sure the correct terminology, but uh, he's gonna be taking that off. We're not gonna be reusing that. Now he's taking off the two bolts that hold the caliper, the rear caliper on. He's gonna be putting off the caliber. Obviously he's putting the rag down always. He does everything always the proper way so your bike doesn't get scratched. And he's just gonna bungee that over so it's out of the way. There's also, as you guys are gonna see in a second here, there's also the ABS sensor, which you really have to be careful about so you don't twist the wire or do any damage to that EBS sensor and it has to go back in basically the same way, which we'll show you later on in the video. So now he's pulling the axle out of the other side and now the wheel is moving freely, jacking the bike up a little bit so he could roll the wheel back and take off the stock rear sprocket. And that's the stock cush drive right there. He's just making sure that there's no tears or any damage or anything like that. And now he's putting in the zippers steel rear sprocket into the existing cush drive. And we were laughing here. He said, make sure you don't use your hand. <laughs> so now he's centering basically the wheel up inside dropping the bike back down so he could install the new zippers axle and axle adjusters and these are really nice because this no matter what how much power you have this will definitely prevent the back wheel from either you know cocking to the left or to the right and also a lot easier to adjust the chain and make sure that the wheel is true and straight. So now he's checking the bearings because he said that they do occasionally go and obviously we have the axle out so this is a perfect opportunity. And he likes to use grease on the rear axle just to make sure that there is no binding. He does not recommend any other kind of lubrications uh, due to the fact is that it collects a lot of dirt and then the grime and dirt build up, which prevent a smooth um, moving axle. So here the caliper is being put back into place. And like I said before, that is the ABS sensor, which has to go in the the exact same way it came out but definitely make sure that the wire is not turned or pinched or broken because you guys will definitely have a problem so he basically just put in a long extension on the other side just to keep everything in place temporarily Now he's moving the bike up just to align all of the holes and he just pushed in the axle through. And now put on the 
axle adjuster on the right side and we'll be putting on the nut and all of this is just basically hand tightened for now until he gets the chain on and also he's making sure that the adjusters are fully forward and that the wheel is at the further most point so this way when you do put the chain on and you do cut it there is room to adjust it to tighten up the chain you don't want it you don't want the wheel at the further most back portion um, of the setting because then you will have no room to adjust it once you put the master link on and complete the install of the chain. So now he's just putting the bolts back in for the caliper. We have both adjusters on, on both sides, axle in. And now Dave is taking out the RNK, I believe it's the RNK 530 gold chain. This chain is uh, O-ring chain, lubricated. The O-ring chains definitely last a lot longer, but definitely make sure you keep your chain lubricated. But these chains with the O-ring, the O-ring actually prevents any dirt or grime to go into the links and start deteriorating the chain. So here I take a little break because Dave actually said that there is a gentleman that drove all the way from Maine to come get work to him and that the reason he's here is because of me, Cycle Fanatic. So I said, let me just stop in into the office and say hi and surprise this guy because he drove all the way from Maine and uh, I definitely uh, wanted to say hi to him and uh, he was super happy i was happy as well to come and say hello uh, we chatted for a little bit he's looking to get some cam work done and exhaust so uh, i was happy more than happy to uh, come say hi to this gentleman all the way from maine so back to uh back to the chain so dave now he just put put the chain on basically the front sprocket and laid it over the back sprocket. And now he's gonna make sure that obviously the wheel has to be in the furthermost point on that axle adjustment. Make sure the tight, and this chain is definitely, it's very, how should I say, not malleable at first because it's new and it's full of the uh, grease that they use from the manufacturer. So you can see that it's super stiff. So you definitely have to, Pull on the chain as hard as you can to make sure that there is no loose spots top or bottom and make sure you get it on as many rings on the sprocket as possible so it's as tight as possible. So this way obviously you don't cut the chain and then you realize that you could have placed the chain more tightly and then you have to cut it again. So. Dave seen where he had to cut the chain he got his that tool is basically a chain cutter also um, then I'll show you the tool for the to install the master link now he's basically going to be pushing out the pin out of the links um, and he'll show you that in a second. Punch, a drift that he's going to be pushing through and that pin is gonna be coming out to re so he could basically remove the link.
So you can see right there, he popped the links off and there is the pen that held the links together. So he's gonna put that aside. And now he's going to take out the master link with the O-rings. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, I chose the gold chain. I think it looks uh, better than the black one. So there's the master link with the O-rings on one side. There is a packet of lubrication that comes with the kit. So now he's just lubing up that portion of the link and the O-rings. Pulling up the chain again, back up onto the sprocket and taking that link and putting it through both sides of the chain. So now you can see in the pan, that's the link right there. And he is going to be installing the o-rings there's two o-rings that go on the other side of the link that he inserted through the chain and those two steel pieces you'll see they go between the links the outer portion of the link and the inside where the o-rings are so this way now he's installing the install tool the chain install tool it has like a v-groove basically that goes on both sides of the link and that is going to crush the two outermost portions of the link together onto those pins. And those steel plates basically prevent that tool or Dave or anybody to prevent that person from crushing the O-rings. So those plates will, ins uh, will be in there basically until the install is complete so those O-rings do not get damaged. So now he crushed the two portions of the link onto one another and there is a tool that he drives separately now to basically flare the pins out over the one portion of the link and now he's taking those two steel plates out. Doing just a basic temporary chain adjustment. On both sides, left and right, just to tighten up the chain a little bit. And here he's actually putting on a laser onto the back portion of the chain on the back sprocket. And he's putting a steel ruler on the front and he's basically looking for where the light is on both sides of the chain and make sure you have a somewhat exact measurement on both sides. So that will tell you if your axle is true to the front or not. And everything is true and straight. And again, this is all temporary. He's going to be doing the correct adjustment when the motor is back together, all the parts are on the bike and there's a load on the rear suspension. Um, and then after 
he runs it again on the dyno and takes it for a couple spins he's going to have to adjust the chain again there is going to be some initial stretch and now he's taking the forward sprocket the front sprocket and basically putting the nut back on to secure it in place permanently absolutely use red loctite on this nut and i believe it's torqued to about 100 or 110 foot pounds um, but definitely check that but i think it's 100 foot pounds And now he's putting that ring over the lock nut. And that will, that's just the second safety measure from preventing that nut from backing out. And the two screws that hold that plate, he's going to be using blue Loctite. Forgot what the torque specs were on these two bolts, but the project is complete at this point for now. All right, guys, so there you have it. That is the zippers chain drive conversion kit. I think it looks absolutely awesome. And we replaced that weak link as far as the belt. The belt is gone. Beautiful gold RK chain o-ring chain in gold absolutely beautiful the zippers kit is really nice too it has the the uh, chain adjusters that hold the axle in place so no matter what happens keeps the axle and the rear wheel true which is very important i think it came out great looks awesome and like i said i'm super happy that we just replaced that weak link got a lot of awesome videos for you guys coming up like i said we're going to be leaving in three days and we uh, I might have a couple videos before Thursday, and then I will show you guys in North Carolina um, when we pick up all the parts. So I appreciate every single one of you guys. Peace out and have a safe and happy Halloween.